um, content creators are telling us that DJI Goggles 2 will have backwards compatibility. Um, yeah. We got, um, you know, we got a message from Drew let's, Camden. Yeah, let's bring up this um, message from Drew. For once, got, uh, we get to know, Blunty. <laughs> we get to know. know. Um, <laughs> and then also Nurk posted a short about it, which are basically the same message. I was also hearing through direct messages from other people that other people are hearing this from their reps as well. Yeah. Um, so basically what we're getting is that DJI has said that they plan to work on backwards compatibility. They are actively working on They are actively working on it. Between the Goggles 2 and older versions of the Air Unit, they are targeting this release in September. There is no official date, and it December. would not consider it a guarantee. Yeah. Sorry, you said September. December is what they're Oh, December. Yeah. There, December. But there's no official date, and I wouldn't care, consider it guaranteed until it happens. Yeah. Um, what I would say is, uh, you know, doesn't change much to me. I think it's we're basically in the same position where we were before. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, before they said this, I, it was it yeah. was like I would give the odds at like fifteen percent likely. Now that they've said this, I would give the odds at you know fifty two percent likely, fifty five percent. I mean, I think oh, okay. the odds of it happening have gone up when actual people from within DJI say it's going to happen. If there's silence, or if they say it's not going to happen, the odds go down. I think that's my take. My my take on this is that three months is enough to get everybody to forget that they care. Um, and then the whole push will be gone behind it. So then anybody who cares later will be way less quiet or way quieter about it. It'll be way less of a hubbub because there's not a launch around it. And yep. then it won't matter enough for them we, to actually have to do it. You so are think, right. To me, my that, opinion is that I, I don't think this is like, I think this is literally just pushing the, pushing down the line saying, talk to us in December and maybe we'll care. You know, basically is how I read this. And then they were told some reps to say that to appease people through content creators, right? Because the reps are kind of like they're, you know, they're, hey, get this message out for us. And they just mm -hmm. get the message out, right? The reps don't have any, like, none of the reps have seen the software, at least as far no, as we no, know no, no. the reps. The, the, right? the reps yeah. are, are marketing people, so to speak. The yeah. reps have connections to technical people, engineering, because in, because... Yeah because uh, content creators are going to ask them technical questions. But I don't think the reps really, and I'm just, this is pure speculation, so take it for what it's worth. I don't think the reps really even talk directly to the engineers. The, I, I feel like the reps will ask a question of an engineering manager who will then give right. them the answer off the roadmap. You know, I feel like yeah. we're very, very far from the actual people who are working on this. But you're right that the people that Paul Nurkle and Drew Camden speak to are people whose job is to manage the public perception and the public messaging. And so they've decided that it is beneficial for them to have this message be out there and they're going to push it out there. And maybe that means it's true and it's something they're actually going to do. Right. And maybe like, have you noticed that this, that around the time of the release, DJI gets super communicative and super connected right about the time that they want people pushing their product. And then later they pull back a little, maybe they don't take your calls. Some people might remember promises from a DJI manager about the uh, motion controller working with the air unit. That was an interview with NERC, I think maybe, or, or original Dobo mm -hmm. or somebody. Um, you know, we got multiple other promises in those interviews that never happened yeah. about features and stuff. Mads you know, Tech the other thing... had a list of things. And Mads Tech is great because he's been yeah. with DJI since before the FPV world. Things like 10-bit color from the such and such drone. Things that he said were in an actual product sheet. Not just a marketing manager saying, hey, we're going to do this. There was literally right. product literature promising this. these features never came. So go ahead. Yeah. So the other thing I want to point out is that not only that, but we do have the other public thing we've talked about before, which is that, you know, there was a big news story from multiple major news outlets about DJI Aeroscope signal. And they mm -hmm. asked multiple, they asked a rep multiple times, they asked multiple reps and DJI told them two separate cases, official statements that, you know, all our Aeroscope signals are encrypted. Mm -hmm. And then a hacker went in and found out, Hey, they're not encrypted and proved it. Mm -hmm. And then DJI said, okay, you were right. Our Aeroscope signals are not encrypted. 
So, so, so that here's was, that was two major news outlets, right? Like this is like so. Uh, here, so my point is that DJI is not interested in vetting good information for you. They're interested in getting a message out that yes. helps them in the public face, right? And I want to, I want to, I want to sort of uh, put some context on this bit that we're doing right now, Blunty, yeah. which is that I, I'll speak for myself. I yeah. feel a little bit defensive because I said. I'll believe it when I see it. Don't count. Don't count your DJI chickens before the, they're in your hatched, right? And then DJI said, "Yay, we're going to do this." And people came to me and were like, "Oh, how does it feel to be wrong?" And I'm like, "I, I stand by that statement today." But I, yeah. I think DJI should get credit for noticing that there's something that we want and saying they're going to do it. They get like this much credit when they actually sure. do it they'll get this much credit from me exactly and i'll exactly. be happy but the say the statement don't believe them until they actually do it is just yeah. historically accurate i'm not like shitting on dji i'm not being a hater and i'm not saying they're not going to do it i think they yeah. might do it but i'm just saying you just don't know and if you if you don't if you yeah. don't feel that way then i think you just don't have enough experience with dji to know how they behave Yes, that, that I would agree with that for sure. Um, mm -hmm. So we will remind you that uh, I think it's still, you know, worth sharing because again, we do not really, uh, you can't guarantee that any of this will happen. We're just guessing on reps and stuff. So, mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're resharing that change.org petition that we shared last time. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to go sign that and add some more fuel to the fire and let, yeah. let you know, remind DJI that you're still there and there's still mm -hmm. numbers going up constantly, I think is important Yeah, because uh, they, they cared enough to put out a message if right. They noticed, people, they think, noticed if, us and they yeah, want to appease my, us. They wouldn't have done yeah, this yeah. if they hadn't noticed us. My opinion is that if that appeases the community. We won't get the update. If it doesn't appease the community, they'll have to do the update to actually appease us. That's Interesting. Sort of so I we got to keep the, we got to keep the pressure on is what you're saying. I think I'll that's say, the case. Yeah. I'll say one more thing. And that is that uh, somebody said promises from DJI are like a monkey's paw. I think there's some truth to that. And what, what I mean by that is that when DJI says, I'm going to give you a pizza, you imagine the most delicious pizza in the yeah. world. And that may not be the pizza that DJI intends to give you. It might yeah. have pineapple on it. And DJI's like, here's the pizza. Don't you like it? And you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. If you're vague so enough when, about the pizza, there's a lot of room to dream up your own pizza. Yeah. When they say they're going to give backwards compatibility, perhaps they will. Perhaps there will be other things that go along with it that maybe you were like, wait a minute, I didn't see that coming. I don't know. Let's. My point is, let's just wait and see. Yes. Let's just wait and see. And when 100%. December will come and we'll find out. Okay. Um, but thank you, DJI, for noticing and I hope that you deliver in the way that we all hope that you will. And if, when you do, I will be your biggest fan and your biggest proponent. But 100%. You earned this skepticism, DJI, I'll and you see, know it. I'll be happy to say right now that if they actually do this update, that'll be a huge push to let us know that they do care. Like even at product releases, at least, they care enough to give us new features, right? We got yeah. the 50 megabit per up. For second update, we never expected that, right? So that was yeah, like one of those yeah. like, hey, hey, they actually do like care enough to give us something. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, I think this is a good faith gesture to the community yeah. that would help I, go a long way when we have future discussions about DJI's support of the community. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know there's yeah. people in DJI who are part of the FPV community who want all the I, things that we want. And I think sometimes those people feel a little bit bad when we shit on the company as a whole. I don't, I don't think that's true. No, you don't think I, that's true. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think that's true. I've had a lot wow. of private conversations with people. Um, I was told that DJI believes we soft mounted our camera, like on our drones, like our actual well, who is, cameras were who soft. Who is mounted. DJI? DJI is a mean, giant company with the, the, lots of employees. They're, they're, uh, that's the problem. I don't think well, there, you can say that there is a monolithic on the, DJI. Nobody on the FPV team has an understanding of FPV, is what I'm saying. Because mm -hmm. not because my understanding was the D DJI's team's understanding of FPV was that we soft mount our cameras, and that my understanding was the Air Unit's design was based around that, and they were having issues in testing because of that. So I don't oh, know how true that, that is, but that's a really good source that I got there. Oh. From, so. Okay, well maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm giving them too yeah. much credit. Um, all right. And that, I mean, I'm just going to say the potato also kind of proves that, right? We got like. Like they didn't know what I they were doing like, with that potato. I feel like the potato is an you ever seen that comic of of the the, 
the tire swing hanging from the tree. And it's like, if, if engineering designed it, if customer service designed it, you know, I think the potato is yeah. an example of sort of this design by committee where some of the people building it had really wacky out their priorities because at the end of the day, DJI is a camera drone company and a camera company. And that's who they're cut. It's like when Spectrum builds a radio, they have to acknowledge the fact that 97.9% .9 of their user base is fixed wing pilots. And so when they try to build a radio for FPV pilots, they make all these weird decisions that don't make sense to us, but they have to take into account their existing audience. And I think that explains my, a lot of what happened with the FPV drone. My viewpoint though, is that that drone would not have been made if they were in tune enough with us to know, and that we would have gotten the Avada as the last drone, because that's what we even saw original specs of that. Like they, uh, we had leaks from Osita LV. He was drawing the same cine whoop that we eventually got, you know, like early demos of that. But for some reason that team went with, you know, the, the potato instead of going with that cine whoop design. And to me, that, that shows like a lack of understanding about the like the hobby. I, and also just, it shows like the first one was an FPV target, right? They targeted it and they realized after that they were like, that doesn't make any sense. The, the Avada is not targeted FPV. It's got goggles. It doesn't have FPV in the name. The goggles don't have FPV in the name. Like they, they yeah. stepped away. Then they went more broad. I don't know. Like I understand where you're coming from, but I feel like there was a lot of lack of understanding about like what the audience I, who bought that drone would want. I just like, am, well, but yeah. I think you're, I, having seen People at yeah. Ken Heron's minefield, I'm going to keep going back to this because it was a real eye opener yeah. for me. I like, yeah. I understood objectively that there are people out there who like the DJI FPV drone. Like, I would have said, yes, of course. But seeing so many people in one place sort of loving it, I was like, wait, they really exist. A DJI served a market there, it just wasn't the FPV market. And I don't think that means that no one from the FPV community is in the room it just means there's a whole bunch of other people in the room who outvote them that's my take i think i, mean, I think it's naive sure. to assume that there's no one in the room who is from the fpv community i mean maybe there isn't I mean, but yeah i mean maybe that's true but like it just um i don't know i've definitely heard a lot of stories that, that seem like nobody in the room can tell them what they need to know <laughs> that may be true. Any, that may be true. To get this piece of information, and they're like very confused about like yeah, how to proceed. That, but that may be true. Um, being there and being listened to are two different things. Yeah, that's that's very true. Yeah. Um, I yeah. I mean, I get what you're saying with the potato. I just don't. I feel like if you if we had designed that drone, if we had sat down and designed the potato, I bet there would have been a lot of changes we would have made that would have also appealed to major customers. That would have applied to us as well. That's sort of where I go, would go. Like mm -hmm. everyone would have benefited from a more durable drone. No, nobody would have been at a downside from the arms not snapping off that thing when you hit a tree, right? And there are ways to design that thing so you didn't snap an arm off when you hit a tree. That is my personal viewpoint. Like you could would have it sacrificed. Have, would other... it have affected the weight? Oh, it's already a fat pig. Would right? it have affected the weight? Would it have affected the flight time, for example? I mean, Maybe, I feel like how heavy is that thing? Like, I mean, I, it's, like... it's it's heavy. Yeah, like I don't know that, I don't know that that was their main concern there. Maybe it was, but yeah, yeah. All right, all right. 